So welcome everyone. My name is Kathy. I'll be moderating this session, the U Portal case studies. Before we begin, I'll just go over a couple housekeeping details. This session is being recorded. You will receive an email announcement once the recordings are available. If you have any questions or comments throughout the session, you can type them into the chat area. I'll take a look at that and share with them once they've finished. Um, but we want to hold addressing all questions until the end of the session. If you have a microphone, if we get chance for a Q&A at the end, you can go ahead and um, unmute and share your questions and comments at that time. In the meantime, do make sure that you are muted so that we avoid any background noise. Um, so the presenters for this session are Chris Beach and Duncan McGrewer. Uh, Chris Beach is a software developer at Unicon Inc. Chris is currently involved in the support and development of open source software, including Open Aquella, UPortal, and Fiasun. Chris sits on the Open Aquella Advisory Board, Open Aquella Security Group, and is a UPortal committer. Chris was previously a senior support analyst for Aquella at Pearson, where he was involved with the hosting support and escalated client support of Aquella. Um, Duncan, I don't believe that I got an updated bio from you, Duncan, but I do see that he has worked for the University of Edinburgh for over 15 years in a number of user support roles and has been in web support since 2014. Duncan manages the portal services team, which provides a personalized gateway to web-based services within and beyond the University of Edinburgh. His research interests include search engine optimization and interaction and the ways website analytics can be used to understand users and improve websites. So I am going to let you guys take it away. Thanks. Thank you, Kathy. Go to the next slide. All right, so we're going to be talking today a little bit about portal strategies, why you might want one and how an open source solution of uPortal might be a solution for you. And we're gonna leave most of the time for Duncan uh, to talk about his portal strategies at the University of Edinburgh and how, he is, um, how his group has been able to leverage uPortal uh, as a solution to that strategy. Next slide, please. All right, so uh, just some headshots we've already been introduced, so we can go ahead and go to the next slide. So in terms of strategy on around portals and dashboards, why you might want one. Students, staff, teachers, faculty, they have a lot of data in a lot of different systems that they need to access from time to time. Um, and really, in order to be successful at accessing all this data, we need a modern, slick approach in order to get the, the pertinent data to the right person at the appropriate time. Right? I really don't necessarily care what the student next to me needs. I want to know what um, my exam dates are or what my financial um, balance is, um, you know, and, and have all those notifications and, um, and data that's flowing to me be just for me. This is not a time to reinvent the wheel. Uh, users will generally gravitate to what is easy and familiar. And if they don't like it, they'll end up not using it unless you are able to somehow force them to do it. And even then that's not the greatest approach. When you look at your strategy for a, a, a dashboard, right? One of the big issues is that you need to be able to integrate with a bunch of different um, uh, technologies that's in your ecosystem, whether that they be on-prem or in the cloud, uh, such as authentication and permissions, your content, your financial office, notifications. There's a lot of different things out there that you can integrate in in order to make this, this, uh, this kind of one-stop shop uh, experience uh, work well for your institution. You know, and a lot of times, and especially with COVID-19 um, still around, this can be the first experience of your institution and it might be one of the primary experiences, right? If you set up your portal right, the students will keep coming back to it to be able to get access to all of their data. Next slide. And so why are we here today? We think that uPortal is, um, is really a top contender to work with your, um, with your portal strategy and to be a solution for you. Um, it's a mature application. It was initially released about 20 years ago and has a strong community behind it. I see several names um, here from the community. Uh, so if you do have questions, please post them in the chat and, um, and I'm sure one of us will be able to jump in and answer it. 
uPortal has an established portlet ecosystem. You don't have to build things from the ground up. You can just configure some portlets and get up and running. Uh, but if you do have customized uh, business logic, which generally most of us do, it's pretty simple to create custom portlets. Uh, if you were there for the uPortal overview, you saw that there's a lot of different ways that you can do layout and branding in uPortal, right? Because it's, this is, the, uh, you're experiencing the university. Uh, you want it to look like your university and to flow the way that, um, that sits right with you. It also hosts a REST API so you can work with uPortal in the back end. But it also has, of course, uh, a modern user interface so users can go ahead and access uPortal uh, directly and be able to get that kind of one-stop shop for all of their data integrations. Uh, with it being a modern UX, web components are encouraged, right? So kind of combined with simply you know, like creating custom portlets uh, using web components, you can do a lot of stuff with uPortal um, in a very short time. Uh, uPortal integrates with a variety of systems uh, and now it's just kind of the sky the limit. So if it doesn't already integrate with one, um, there's a lot of developers out there that are able to help you with that integration. Um, and then, I don't know if it is the absolute highlight, but one of the really major points is that it can personalize your user experience. So you get that that feel of when you log into uPortal, um, it, it knows you and it knows the kind of data that you need to access so you can have a successful learning experience at your institution. Next slide. So what we're going to do now is I'm going to turn the time over to Duncan so he can talk about how he has been able to leverage you portal in his portal strategy at Edinburgh. Great. Thanks very much for that, Chris. Um, I just want to go through a little bit of the, the background of, of why we decided to implement an enterprise portal. I um, also want to introduce you to it. So I'd like to give you just a little bit of a tour. I've not been brave enough to do a live web tour. I've got screenshots of what we've, what we've got in there. Um, and also talk a little bit about where our roadmap might take us. So some of the things we're looking to do next uh, within, our, within our, our enterprise portal. So firstly, to talk about our organizational needs, so the reasons we, we wanted to go through and do this, and at the risk of repeating some of the things Chris has said, um, the University of Edinburgh is a very large and evolved organization. So there's not one central um, communications point, usually, and not one central point where students uh, get information. It's devolved out into a series of colleges and schools. Um, so what that means is there's very, very rarely one answer for everything. So actually trying to design communications that work for each individual person with that kind of diversity is extremely difficult. So instead of providing a website that has a group of options, what we need to do is have those options defined. When people log into the portal, they get information, the tasks, their own content. So actually what they get is a, an experience of being uh, very immediate when they, when they log in here. And obviously with those diverse comms channels, there's a lot of noise. So it's very difficult sometimes to tell what's important. Um, so what we want to do is narrow down the kind of range of things that people can do in terms of performing academic and administrative tasks. So to make sure they cut to the heart of what they need to do that day. It also allows our communicators to communicate effectively as well because they can plan what they're going to do and send out information knowing that it's going to be getting to the right person at the, the right time. Um, and also th there's a case for analytics in there so people can understand how it's being used so they can look further into to how people are, are interacting with again student and staff life at the university. One of the things that comes along with the University of Edinburgh being more than 450 years old is that we are very acronym heavy. So as soon as you join us, you get hit with MyEd, which is our portal, introduce you, to, introduce you to that in a moment, but also Euclid and, and various terms for our buildings and all these things. So actually it takes a while for new staff and students to get used to what that means. If they're told to log into Euclid, what, what are they to do with this? Having one place to log in and perform your task, understand what you need to do, is kind of essential for these people to, to get on with their, with their life. And again, as Chris mentioned, you know, it's interoperable with many of the key systems we have. So with our student records database, um, and also allows our applicants to log in and manage their application to university as well. So to provide the information, um, the uh, updated uh, grade information, English language requirements, that kind of stuff, allows them to, to process that effectively. It also allows our existing staff and students to get into their email, um, their email and, and diary, uh, but also to see their timetable, so what they've got to do that day and any events that are forthcoming and also to book on to our seminars, conferences, that, that type of thing. 
It's also the primary route by which our staff and students get into our virtual learning environments. So we use Blackboard's Learn system and also Moodle. It allows people to go into the correct thing and also to, to jump through some of the hoops of logging in there. They can sort of get directly into uh, their, their courses very, very easily. We like uPortal because it doesn't deliver things we don't want. We just don't use the pieces of it that aren't essential to our, to our, our business requirements, again, as Chris said. Um, but we also like the fact that this is an open source thing and we can extend it where we need to. So we're doing a talk again tomorrow, Chris and I, same time, um, about Fizen, which is our notification service. So we found that there were um, communications coming in from various systems that needed to be managed and brought into a sensible place for our users. So that's what we did. As I mentioned, this simplifies our, our task completion, allows people to manage their day, so it's essential from that point of view. People will log in each day, see what they've got to do in a way that they would not go and visit a website to check if new information has been presented. And also, we, we know who you are. This is kind of a creepy big brotherism, but promise I'm not using that information for anything untoward. What we're just trying to do is optimize the experience so that people have delivered the information they want in the order they want it to make it easier to, to get hold of. So I'll introduce to you MyEd, which is our, our kind of local um, branding, if you will, for, for our U portal. Um, this is the first, again, experience that everyone gets when they come to the University of Edinburgh. They're managing their application. This is where they do it. They go to MyEd, they log in, they, they get going there. Um, and some of the logic about why we've organized the homepage in the way we have. Um, strategy came there is to just to be able to easily access the most used content. So to save people time in their journey through to, to doing things. And the way we've organized this is based on analytics. So we look at what people use the most based on their staff, student, applicant, alumni affiliations. So we're, we're directing them to the most used things. But also to use on the basis of user research. So we do experiments with people. We sit them in front and see how they, they interact with things to ensure that you know, when those key tasks, those key important things, they can easily get to them just in terms of vocabulary and in terms of positioning on the, the screen and so on. So our students see four key portlets now, the fifth one coming. So Learn is their entry into virtual learning environments, to see that on the homepage. And um, we also find that students use the library a lot, which is, I'm sure, very encouraging for everyone to hear. People are making the use, them the most of their time at university. Um, but then also email and calendar. So what new emails have you got? You get a little bit of a preview, get your calendar of what you're doing that day. So again, this helps people organize what they're, what they're doing. And very soon students will see a fifth key portlet, um, which is EdHelp. So this is our new university um, student uh, inquiry management uh, system um, it directs you through to a knowledge base and support channels. So these are the, the five key things that again feedback surveys analytics these are telling us that students uh, need and want and we're constantly monitoring that to make sure that they, they remain relevant. Staff on the other hand see two key portlets this is email and calendar because they don't use the library so much um, many of them are administrators so actually it would be uh, something that loads that's not not important to people um, and their help processes are just a little bit different so see something else what we do though in our homepage in your portal is allow people to favorite other content so actually if there's something that you use a lot because of your job role um, that doesn't make it into our analytics and user research across the board you can favorite items so that you get easy access to it and what it ends up with is a screen that looks somewhat like this so you see these key portlets these sort of boxed channels are available for email and calendar um, no new emails. I'm a zero inboxer, so I'm doing well. It's a test system. I promise that's not the case. Um, but as you can see, we can favorite items there. And also at the top, you can see we've used a banner there to let people know um, about our response to, to COVID-19. So it's possible to put announcements along the top if you need to, to kind of circumvent some of the um, uh, email systems that we have in case people are, are missing important, important announcements. And in terms of the layout that we've attached to this portal, it's very, very adaptable. Um, but our um, preference for this one is to design with a mobile first uh, attitude. Um, people on desktops have got more space and can kind of live with some of the, some of the uh, things that, are, that, that happen as a result of that. Uh, the fact that you maybe have to take an extra click and it loads, it's not so worrying uh, on a desktop than it is having a group of content load on a mobile that's just not effective for people. Um, so our users access the content through menus rather than a series of tabs that load in a group of content each time. Um, we have shown through testing and, and still believe that menu-based navigation makes it easier to find things. So that's why we've, we've done it that way. Um, and, and again, it avoids the need to load these content-heavy tabs. Some of them are very simple. Some of them are just loading in a, maybe a link or two, frankly, but some of them are lo loading in a lot. So the ones that are bringing your email, your diary, the, the learning system, as we'll see in a second, are bringing in content directly from those systems. So it's kind of proxying it through to, to view. 
So you want it to make sure that people who are loading things on mobile are loading the correct things for them and it doesn't um, deter from the experience moving through. And um, the menus that they're they're new to us, um, they're organized using categories and subgroups again so that people can find and organize these. Um, they either take you directly to a resource, so it's either a direct link out um, that you would probably not otherwise have found uh, on the university website, very large, um, or to open content and experience it within my ed. So there's a variety of things happen there. Um, the way we've organized those um, menus is based again on research. So we did surveys and some tree sorting activities to make sure that it was organized in a coherent and sensible way for our, for our users and how they understand the university. Um, also, by having specific portlets load when you click on them on mobile, it means you can focus on that content and you're not, again, surrounded by noise that's not making a lot of sense. It helps with load speed and helps our people get on with what they've got to do. So as you can see, when you open one of these top menus, perhaps services, you're presented with a large group of information, um, many of which are uh, pieces of terminology that you would know at the University uh, of Edinburgh. Um, and that's one of the things we're looking to uh, improve so that people who are new to the organization don't particularly need to know what Web Central or EBS Online are. Probably if you don't know what those are, they're not relevant to your job role, but these are one of the things we're, we're looking to, to just improve. And as I mentioned, there are some of these um, portlets that um, load with uh, preload with information in them uh, already. So this is an example of our uh, integration into our virtual learning environment. As you can see, when the portlet opens, what it does is shows you the, the, your list of courses for this year. Um, I'm a member of staff, so I don't get anything exciting and academic. Instead, I'm uh, to put up with these mandatory training courses for fire awareness and so that I don't um, lose a USB stick full of student information uh, in, in the bar. Um, some of the things that we really want to do with our portal, so some of the priorities that are, are coming up for us. I mean, there is a little bit of um, uncertainty about, obviously, our response to coronavirus. Um, we're not certain whether we will have students on campus, at least for the first part of next year. Um, so we have a series of adapting a response teams that are working to, to try and work out what our student journeys are going to look like when, when everyone comes back. So we have to be mindful um, about uh, about some changing priorities there. So we don't want to go down too, too deep an, an area and, and develop there uh, and, and block off other routes for us. But a couple of things we are definitely going to do um, is, uh, I think, as Chris mentioned, uh, enhance the personalization of this portal. So it says, hello, Duncan, here's your email, here's your, your calendar. But actually, by knowing what group you're in, so what part of school department of the university that you're working in, um, we could, again, provide a, a, an alternative layout. So at the moment, we personalize to the extent that we know if you're a staff, a student, an applicant, someone who's graduated from the university. But if we know more about um, your job role or the department that you work in, again, we could, using analytics, work out what types of things you're more likely to use, get them on the homepage, get people's uh, lives just that little bit easier. And we could also look into providing extra content, so specific portlets that deal with, you know, school level news or events that are happening uh, in, in your area or changing priorities and messaging from, from senior staff in those zones. So actually to, to, to highlight those rather than, again, these long email lists that don't really provide a lot of interaction um, or knowledge about how people are using them. Once that email is out there, sometimes it's very difficult to, to analyze what's, what's going on. Um, the other thing I'm kind of excited about is improving the way that we deploy and test. Um, so at the moment, the, the way we've configured Uporo, um, when we are going to make a change, it's, you know, obviously we have pre-live systems that allow us to check that it works. Uh, but in terms of garnering a uh, user feedback, we send it out there so that everyone experiences it and then we understand whether it was a popular move or not. Um, by being able to personalize just to smaller groups, what it means is that we can target perhaps a group of people who are early adopters or a specific group of people who we know are kind of tame and on our side. So we can allow them to experience changes in the menu structure or the way things look or interactions or any of these things. So we can deploy them to a small area first as kind of beta test. So they make sure that people, um, uh, so the, 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 the decisions that we've made are, are verified before we then release it to a, a larger group of people. And one of the things we're starting to do is to improve the staff layout. So you've, you've seen the staff layout for us there. Um, there are some ways that that's not working. Um, so we want to um, go back and, and make sure with people that, again, we're using the correct terminology and that things are grouped the way they should. Um, because we spent a long time making this optimal in a, a student experience, because that's, that's obviously one of our 
uh, key sort of uh, drivers when, when using web services at the university. Um, staff, I'm not going to say they're an afterthought, but they were secondly the second thought. So we then go back and verify those things again, ensure that it's working for our, for our staff um, before we uh, go through uh, and, and uh, reorder the, the layout. And in terms of lessons that we've learned from uh, adopting the portal, and we've been using the portal for a very long time. I have been with the university for 15 years and it was present with me there. So I don't know if we were there uh, at the starting point 20 years ago, but very soon afterwards. And what I say is if you're thinking about adopting one of these, don't be a set of bookmarks. Because in the early days, we, we maybe fell into this, this trap. Um, but if people want to maintain a set of bookmarks, they will do it. It's very easy to do inside your browser. So people don't, don't need this experience. Um, so you need to set some standards about what you will include in the portal and what you will not include in the portal. So what, what is the goal of installing this thing is to make people's lives easier. And by just having every link at your organization in there, that's not helping anybody. So establish some strategic goals for us. It's experience, particularly student experience, and making sure that people fulfill their, their academic and administrative requirements. And I strongly advise to act in a data-driven way. No hippos. So this is the highest paid person's opinion in the room, um, which is certainly some of the ways that decisions used to be made. I hopefully we don't do too much of that anymore. Um, obviously, uPortal is, is open source. And if you are developing in an open source way, you need to take that obligation seriously. Um, if you're just a consumer of this thing, you'll find that the roadmap soon doesn't align with what you're looking for. If you're not reaching out and trying to establish other people who are thinking the same way as you or at least in the same strategic area you'll find that it doesn't align with your your needs anymore so you've got to i feel you've got to give back what you what you kind of take from these areas but we like that it's um adaptable to our requirements as we've changed over 15 years another thing i say is that make users feel that they're part of this thing so when we do our user research we email all students and get thousands of replies and it's really uh, warming to see that students want to see this thing get better um, and when we do user testing people almost can't believe that we we care as much about their, their their life and their experience at the university so make them feel part of the design process establish testing to make sure that again the experience which is central to our plan can be central to yours as well so that people understand the reasons that they're um, contributing and that things progressively get better. If you want to find out about the changes that we made to our new portal, again called MyEd, in the last year, um, there's a couple of things there. So edin.ac slash new dash myed dash info will take you to our, our blog series about um, how we've changed MyEd. Um, a couple of particular ones there. The first about how we um, have focused um, the layout of our portal and what's there for students. So if you want to read about that, you can. Um, and then again, some of the research methods that we've used, including tree sorts, interviews, analytics, in order to make sure that things are, are working for our people. I think I'm back to you now, Chris. All right, thank you, Duncan. We're getting short on time. Uh, that was um, that was really interesting to see the the walkthrough of your of my ed. Um, if you want to get involved in uPortal, if you're not involved yet, there are the community list and the developer list. The, uh, the home page is out there as well. Um, we do have a question from Andrew. Um, she said, Duncan, how do you pull into uPortal all those items from Office 365? Email preview, calendar items? Um, it's a web proxy, I believe. I must admit, I am not the most technical person you'll, you'll speak to this week. Um, I believe it's just proxied from a, an API that Office 365 um, provides to us. Um, but I can take that question to our developers and, and get back to you later, if that's okay, unless you happen to know, Chris. I think it's... I don't off the top of my head. have a pretty open API, I think. And Jim responded as well. Any other questions? Yeah, the big question we had about those, uh, not really about usefulness, because I think it's, it's useful to see your diary, but those first five unread items in your inbox aren't always the most useful. So should it be five, should it be 10, should it be boom, you know? Um, and it's actually, this is one of the big things about email for me. There's so much of it at the university. So actually anything that reduces me having to look at my email is for the best. So actually, that's, that's been one of our, our focuses in the recent past is should it show five or are you just going to launch your email each time anyway? But I, I think it's actually quite nice, like particularly the calendar I like.
Uh, I'm sorry, I don't I don't see the chat because I'm sharing my screen. Is there? Uh, yeah, there's no there's no further um, questions. So you can access the chat um, from the top part of your screen too. But I think we're actually at probably okay. about time. Are we just about there? Yeah. Sorry if I sorry if I talked too much, Chris. My, no, me. Oh, okay. no. We've still got about five minutes. If anybody does have questions, feel free to oh. put them in the chat or you can unmute yourself and ask. And if folks want to pull up the chat and just drop in um, your institution and how long you've been using uPortal or if you're just interested in it, um, it helps us gauge uh, the interest level um, as we look at doing, um, you know, doing these presentations next year and whatnot. Duncan, um, this is Jim Helwig. Um, I know a few years ago uh, there was some design work that had been done to have a more kind of a contextual um, display of information um, to Edinburgh students, um, kind of based on like to highlight things at different times of the academic calendar year, maybe, or um, based upon other circumstances did that um ever get implemented and in uh, what relationship does that have with the portal so thanks jim is this can i ask is it does it does it sound right if i say it's the notifications work well maybe notifications kind of fed into uh, it or maybe was yeah. part but i think that there was um it and it, there was at least a design for Maybe kind of a like a landing page or something that included not just notifications but other stuff as well. Um, it was kind of this a new way of looking potentially at um, at you know kind of like a default experience when you arrived. Um, you know, um, our our you know we the U portal that many of us experience is personalized and is customizable, but it's not dynamic based upon the context of the student at a given point in time or something um yeah sorry i don't i don't i don't know what that is i mean i must admit like i've only i've only been doing this role with the portal for for just about the last six seven months um i mean I, i'm very interested in some of the work that i see with these uh, web components particularly because one of the things i think about ours is that it's very text heavy which obviously shortens load times very nicely but um, if you're trying to find a specific item, as soon as you associate, I think, from, from web management with an image with it, it's very much quicker to find it. Um, so it's definitely something I'd want to put some research time into. Um, and I think in terms of like that, that sort of more personalized experience, the route we're going is, is in terms of um, like LDAP groups in the background, understanding who people are um, so that you can deliver a different layout to them. And also no, notifications in the top right. So this is like calls to action. You, you know, your fees are due, or you've got a library item. This kind of library items ready to pick up. That kind of stuff. Um, it's where we want to go with that. Um, I'd have to look back into the the vaults though for that one. I'm sorry, Jim. I don't know what that what that was. What, what solution did you opt for it? Uh, we were just interested in that, mm. um, and we were, you know, thinking maybe that was that kind of um, more um, contextual and dynamic yeah. presentation, um, it seemed like something that would be worth investigating, but we didn't, <clears throat> we didn't have a, the resources to investigate that further. Yeah. And um, it sounds like maybe the uh, design work that was done in Edinburgh, um, maybe there weren't the resources to actually uh, implement definitely the case yeah and um, we'd love to get our our design team back on this they're so snow though with with new website requests at this point um that it might be difficult to get them back but yeah it's definitely one for us to to look into for certain thanks for that yeah um i'm i make it on the half hour there so if anyone's got anything they want to follow up with of course that you know I, I think you can get in touch with us through the, the conference routes. And I've already uploaded the slides to our, um, our chat for the session. So if anyone wants to get hold of them, then they're absolutely there. Thanks so much, Duncan. I'm gonna go ahead and close out this meeting. Thank you all for your participation.